Seriously? Hey, hey guys, and welcome to another tactics video with myself, Six Plus Stevo. Now, in my recent tactics video uh, covering Death Dreads, we went over the different build options and things available to Death Dreads, and all the different options and combinations you can come up with to create Death Dreads for any situation. If you're interested in seeing that video, and you should be, because it's a damn good one, click that link up there and go and check that one out. Uh, in this one, we're going to be doing much the same thing, but we're not talking about Death Dreads this time. We're talking about the War Boss, probably the most important miniature in any orc army uh, he is the biggest and the best and uh, yeah your war boss is just crucial to your to your tribe um, and uh, kind of sets the whole scene of where the tribes going you know where he goes the others follow and so um, it's great in this codex all the different things you can do with a war boss and how you can equip them and what traits and things you can give them and you can really give them some seriously good buffs and uh, yeah there's there's quite a lot of creativity and stuff available and uh, just like with the death dreads you can create very different war bosses from starting from the same data sheet by giving different war gear different warlord traits uh, different shiny gubbins uh, and different clan traits you can really create some quite unique characters and that's what this video is all about. Uh, I'm going to share with you some of the different builds that I've come up with. And uh, just to show you a, a small example of what's possible with them. Um, and uh, yeah, but I suppose before we get into that, let's just talk about the war boss himself. And uh, we'll go over his stats and talk about some of his abilities and things. And then we'll build off that and work from there. In going through our examples so the war boss is coming in at five power level uh, 90 points his stat line reads as follows movement five inches weapon skill two plus ballistic skill five plus strength six toughness six six wounds five attacks leadership eight and a four plus save uh, he comes equipped as standard with Big Chopper, Combi Rocket, Two Sluggers and Stick Bombs. Um, he can replace those with other options and he can also be equipped with an Attack Squig. Um, he's got the Here We Go and War special rules. Um, the War in particular is a very special rule because you need a War Boss to be able to perform a War. So he definitely got the War special rule. Without him, you can't have it. Um, he is dead tough, so he comes with a 5 plus invulnerable save, which is really nice. He didn't get that in the last codex, and they haven't had that for quite a while. Um, the lack of invulnerable saves for our characters and things was a real issue in the past that this codex has really addressed, and thank God for that. Um, he also has the special rule War Boss, which is an aura ability. Uh, while a friendly clan core or clan character unit is within six inches of this model, each time a model in that unit makes a melee attack, add one to the attack's hit rolls. So, for example, uh, some boys nearby, they're not hitting on threes anymore, they're hitting on twos when they're within six inch range of your war boss. Um, so, a nice little ability. Uh, he has lost the breaking heads um, rule that he used to have, which is a bummer. Um, that's now a stratagem, which kind of sucks, um, especially as our leadership uh, across the army has sort of taken a hit, or at, le at least uh, not our leadership as such, but our special rules that negated the leadership has taken a bit of a hit. Um, but yeah, he's very cool. Um, so he's got a great stat line, especially for the points you're paying. He's, he's very reasonably costed, I would say. He's equipped with some nice weapons. He can deliver a nice punch. He's got a nice aura ability, um, invulnerable save, and he's got that war special rule, which uh, is most important of all. Which means he can, you know, buff the entire army for a couple of turns, giving them the opportunity to charge, even if they advanced, 
and giving them extra attacks for two turns uh, is not to be sniffed at. I mean, that alone kind of makes the uh, war boss worth it, I would say. Um, but yeah, he's, he's, he's got some uh, good stuff and he's got access to some really cool stuff. But anyway, there he is. Um, that's the boss. And so without further ado, let's take a look at some of the options and some of the things we can try out to create some unique war bosses. So the first boss I want to share with you, probably my favourite one for obvious reasons, is the Daka boss. So this guy I have equipped with the Custom Shooter and the Big Chopper. And he is a bad moon. Uh, so he's getting those bad moon buffs of added 6 inch range to those uh, Daka and heavy weapons. And he's getting them exploding sixes, giving him an extra pip of AP on the shooting attacks, which is very nice. I've also equipped him with uh, the, the Warlord trait, the best armor Teeth can buy. Now this is a lovely little trait, exclusive to Bad Moons, that just adds a nice bit of survivability to the war boss. So it is adding uh, one to his armor saving throws. So basically giving him a three plus armor save instead of a four plus, which is a nice little buff. But on top of that, it's buffing his five plus invun to a four plus invun. So yeah, basically a plus one to both his normal and invulnerable save, just making him a lot more survivable. So uh, he's never going to be lower than a four plus save. And uh, against non-AP, he's got a nice three plus save. So he's on Space Marine armor, which make quite a bit of difference, I think. Um, and then I've given him the relic, the Dead Shiny Shooter. Now, I was going to go for the Gobshot Thunderbuss for this, which is the Bad Moon exclusive weapon, which is a lovely weapon that auto-hits. Um, it's uh, Which is, you know, any weapon that auto-hits is really nice. But, 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 the Dead Shiny Shooter is really good as well. And oh, I just kind of had to give him this weapon because it's got the following profile. Range 18 inches, so in his hands, he's got a 24 inch range with this weapon. And it is DACA 14 slash 10. So he's getting 10 shots at 24 inch range, and he's getting the 14 shots at 12 inch range. Um, it's strength 5, AP minus 1, the same as the Thunderbuss. But here's the thing that pipped it for me. It's 2 damage a pop. Uh, so yes, the Thunderbuss is really good because it auto hits. Um, but it is a shorter range, and I just think this, oh, I don't know, I just think this is really nice in the hands of a war boss. Gives him some serious, serious DACA. Now, he's going to be, even though he's a shooty boss, he's got he's going to be firing out a whole lot of DACA. He's still going to be piling his way in there. He's still going to be swinging with that big chopper, doing horrendous damage with that, with lots of his melee attacks and a 2-plus weapon skill and all that good stuff. Uh, but... On the way, while he's doing that, he can be daquering away and doing quite nasty damage with this weapon. Um, two damage a pop is really nice. So now you're really hurting like Space Marines and stuff, you know. Um, that is is really, really nice. Two damage with that amount of shots is very tasty indeed. Um, and I don't think it's going to take him long to get within that 12-inch range and be spitting out those 14 shots. Um, and you've always got the option of using some of the uh, stratagems on him to sort of make him count as being in within half range and things like that. And you could also use the Bad Moon exclusive uh, stratagem, the showing off. So he gets exploding sixes to hit, scoring additional hits, which could be really nice. He's going to be a, a really effective boss on the table. He's got a nice bit, he's got that toughness six to rely on. He's got a good save, a good invulnerable save. He's got quite a few wounds, so he's going to be able to like, take a bit of damage before he goes down. And he's going to be very effective at shooting and very effective in melee. He's just a really, really good all-rounder. Now, next up, we've got the Dead Ard boss. So this guy I've designed with just survivability in mind. This is the boss that's going to be able to tank all kinds of damage and just keep on going. He's going to drive your opponent mad trying to kill this guy because he is not going to go down easy. And if they want to kill him, 
they're either going to have to get incredibly lucky on their dice rolls and hope that you're incredibly unlucky with your dice rolls or put in just a serious amount of uh, resources into killing this guy and meanwhile he's causing all sorts of damage um, so what have I done um, I have equipped him with a combi rocket and a power claw and I've also given him an attack squig so with all that he comes in at 105 points so a bit more expensive than the last one with the uh, power claw and the attack squig uh, bumping up the pointage a bit but he's definitely definitely worth it um, so, he's got the Death Skulls trait, which is uh, really nice. Gives him some of the uh, objectives secured. It gives him some of those re-rolls, which is going to make him very effective on the attack. Um, and very importantly, against Mortal Wounds, he's getting that 5-plus Feel No Pain, uh, which is really nice, because seeing how got hard this guy is to wound i think mortal wounds is what people are going to be going for a lot to try and bring this guy down and then he's going to have that you know one in three chance at saving a lot of those as well um and they're going to be trying them because just hurting him in the standard ways is not going to be easy and that is because i've given him the ardor's nails uh, warlord trait and i've also given him the relic the super cyborg body and uh, this is a combination I've tried out. I've used this a few times on various characters and it works beautifully. Seriously, it is so hard to kill an Orc HQ with these, uh, this trait and this relic combined. So Arda's Nails, what does that do? It's a minus one to wound. Now bear in mind, he's already toughness six. So a lot of weapons, um, especially small arms fire and things, is going to be wounding this guy on a five anyway. So you get adding an extra one to that. Now suddenly most of the weapons in your opponent's army are wounding this guy on a six. That is, you don't want to be wounding things on sixes. That's not many of those are going to get through. Um, and then he's still got, you know, he's still got his four plus save um, and his five plus invulnerable to back up and that five plus feel no pain against mortal wounds. Um, but the super cyborg body makes it even better because now he's got a four plus invul save. But on top of that, he halves all damage taken. So, yeah, really, really nice. So your opponents at a minus one to wound, meaning many, many weapons are dropping down to a six to wound this guy. And then the few that do get through, uh, you've got a good chance of saving on that invulnerable save. And then anything that makes it through all that and still wounds him, you're halving the damage. And having six wounds to chew through... It's going to take the opponent some time to get him going. Uh, now, you could back this guy up with a pain boy, which would be really nice, just to help out that little bit further, um, repair some of that damage and things, just to really make him tanky as hell. Um, but yeah, he's going to be an absolute nightmare. And being Death Skulls as well, he's got that objective secured, so he could be sitting on a point, being really hard to shift, just get racking in those game-winning points. Uh, he's got the power claw, so he's going to be in combat wrecking stuff. He's got the attack squig for the extra attacks. He's got the combi rocket, so he's going to be firing out rockets with those re-rolls, remember, um, to do some uh, th three damage with the rockets. Um, so yeah, just really nice. He's going to be putting out the hurt and just he's going to be impossible for your opponent to ignore, but they're going to want to ignore him because they're going to have to put so much resources into bringing this guy down. He's going to be really, really hard to shift. Seriously, guys, I cannot stress enough how the Arda's Nails and Super Cyborg Body like are just... They go together to create such resilience that us as Orc players are just not used to of our Orc HQ. Uh, all the previous codexes going way back, long, long way, uh, have not had this kind of resilience. Um, it really is very special trust me it really really is so the next boss is more your traditional orc war boss and the kind of thing that a lot of people go for it's the classic fighting boss uh, so this guy he comes in at 105 points i've equipped him with the combi scorcher because he's going to be all about the combat and uh so give him a good close range weapon to do a bit of Bernie before he gets in there. Uh, the power claw and an attack squig. So I've given him all the kind of equipment that you'd want to give to something designed for getting straight into combat. He is a goth. 
So he's got the Goff clan culture, no mucking about. So he's getting exploding sixes to hit. And if he charges or makes a heroic intervention, he's getting a plus one strength on the charge. Um, he has uh, the Warlord trait, Might is Right. Um, I've given him that over the uh, Goff one. The, the Goff one, proper killy, gives a plus one attack and uh, a minus one to the armor penetration of his attack. Which is very nice, which is very, very nice indeed. But... I think uh, on the charge, by giving him might is right, that gives him plus one attack and plus one strength. So now, with that power claw being times two strength, so that is uh, strength 12, uh, with his plus one strength from might is right, that is strength 13, but with the plus one strength on the charge as well, he's going to be at strength 14. So now when this guy charges into things of toughness 7, you know, vehicles, big monsters, dreadnoughts, etc. Yeah, he's wounding them on twos. Bloody lovely. Um, yeah, uh, so really, really nice. It combines beautifully with that goth trait. Uh, I think Might is right on another boss with a power claw. It would be the extra one, making it 13. It, it, it's just, it's not, it's going to make no difference at all in any situation um but because he's a goth and he gets that plus one on the charge in combination with that yeah strength 14 yes please um doubling uh toughness seven yes yes two two plus to wound yes um and just to really really hit that point home i've had to give him the relic the killer claw because the killer claw is just so awesome um you're not suffering that minus one to hit um, and it just makes a power claw that much better. You're getting a reliable three flat three damage, AP minus four. Yeah, it's bloody lovely. Absolutely lovely. Uh, so he's going to be throwing, he's got plus one attacks. So he's going to be throwing out six attacks. He's got exploding sixes. He's going to benefit from his own war ability, those extra attacks and everything. He is going to be ludicrously powerful and against anything anything because there's very little in the game that is toughness eight very little so he's really going to be putting the hurt on and even if you are coming up against toughness eight you're still wounding it on threes you're getting a bucket load of attacks you're probably going to get some exploding sixes in there for extra hits and uh yeah it, it's, it's really really nice plus he's got them couple of bonus attacks from the attack squig as well yeah the fighting boss uh yeah that's one that no one wants to tangle with um downsides to him we've given him nothing to make him more survivable again you could get round that by um having like a pain boy and stuff nearby um but yeah he's uh he's built for one purpose to just charge headlong into the enemy and just wreck anything he comes into contact with and i'm fairly confident there's very little in the game that could stand up to a full-on charge from a fighting boss and at 105 points i think he could be destroying units that cost a lot more than that and getting his points back not to mention all the buffing abilities and things that he throws out as well uh, he's likely to be supported by a load of knobs or mega knobs or more boys um so yeah fighting boss really really tasty Next up, we've got the buff boss. Uh, not buff because of his uh, muscularity, um, but buff because that's what he does. He throws out a lot of buffs. Um, he comes in at 90 points. He's armed with a combi rocket and a big chopper. And he's got the blood axe trait. So this is a really, really nice trait. Uh, the blood axe trait means that anything shooting at him over 18 inches away is, uh, he's going to be gaining the benefits of light cover. So it's going to be improving his already okay armor save um, just by one, which is really, really nice. So it's going to make him a little bit more survivable at range. Very handy early on. So, you know, if, if you do leave him out in the open and, you know, he is, it, it, that, that's going to be nice. But the real benefit is the fact that he can uh, fall back and still shoot or charge, um, which is going to be nice. It's a really nice ability to have to be able to fall back and then on the following turn charge back into combat again and uh, yeah, get all the benefits from that charge. Yeah, very, very nice. So what I've given him for the Warlord trait is the Big Gob. Um, 
<laughs> I love the name of that. Uh, it's nice and simple. Um, basically, what that does is add three inches to hit this Warlord's Aura abilities to a maximum of nine. Well, that's what it does. It gives him a nine-inch Aura ability. So that plus one to hit that he's kicking out to all the Orcs within six inches, now it's nine inches. That's going to be... That's, that's huge. Nine inches either side. You've got this big 18-inch bubble... Um, or bigger when you count in his base, actually, because he comes on quite a big base. So let's say you're getting at least a, almost a 20-inch bubble of uh, a buff there to uh, things all around him. It's going to be really, really nice. You don't have to babysit your units so much. Um, it's going to be much easier for things to benefit from that and get that uh, plus one to attack. So he's really going to be buffing all the boys and stuff around him. And, uh, yeah, some stages in the game, it forces you to split units up a little bit and move them around to get objectives and target other units and things, and you can be drawn out and then pull. It's, it's so annoying when you're just out of range of some of those aura abilities and things. But, yeah, being a 9-inch buff means you can put hordes and hordes of boys around him, stick him straight in the centre, and he's going to be kicking that buff out and uh, making them seriously killy on the attack. And then, just to add to the buffing abilities... Um, I've given him uh, Mogrog's Thinking Cap, which is a beautiful relic that basically every turn in the command phase on a 4+, uh, you gain a command point. So every command phase, when you gain the obligatory command point for the turn, you roll a dice on a 4+, you get another one. Um, that's very nice indeed. So you've got 50-50 shots over the game. You're likely to get, you know, play averages two to three extra CP in a game and uh, how powerful a lot of these stratagems are and things like stratagems are so key to the game and they can really make the difference a lot of the time so getting an extra two or three CP or hell if you roll really well an extra five CP throughout the course of the game that is massive and that is really going to help your army out so the downsides of this boss is that he's not going to be quite as killy as some of the other ones we've talked about uh, and he's not going to be quite as tanky as some of the other ones we've talked about. Um, he's, he's still got the big chopper and the combi rocket, so he can still put out the hurt, um, both from shooting and in combat. And let's forget, let's not forget, he is still a war boss. So even without some of those buffs and things, like he's still powerful. You know, he's still going to be throwing out a lot of attacks and uh, be a threat on the table. Um, but yeah, the advantages are he's cheap, and he's giving out some great buffs and making the rest of your army powerful um, so th casting out that wide aura ability buffing as many boys as possible to really hit home so where you want this guy is sitting in the center of a big sort of traditional style orc army um, just leading hordes and hordes of boys charging headlong in and uh, buffing them to the best possible ability um, yeah Really, really nice. And gaining a lot of CP so you can use these stratagems and things that are really, really powerful. So, yeah, a really good buffing boss there. Um, and just uh, dead sneaky, like a blood axe should be. And the last one I've got is called the debuff boss. So this guy, the last one, was about buffing your stuff and uh, gaining you CP and... Uh, you know, throwing out some nice uh, buffs to your boys and stuff nearby. This guy is much more about uh, decreasing the effectiveness of your enemy and the targets um, while throwing out some buffs as well at the same time. Uh, so this guy comes in at 105 points. I've equipped him with the Combi Scorcher, the Power Claw and the Attack Squig. So he is very killy at close range. The Power Claw is going to be putting some serious hurt out. He gets bonus attacks from the Attack Squig. Um, he's got that Scorcher giving him auto hits at close range. Um, he is a freebooter, so he's also got that added buff of uh, add one to the attack roll, uh, which he's probably not going to need a lot of the time because he's you know in combat he's hitting on twos, um, and from the shooting with that Scorcher he's auto hitting anyway. But he could well help gain that buff for the rest of your uh, boys because. When he touches something, he probably is going to kill it, to be fair. Um, and then that gives a lot of your boys the uh, plus one to hit afterwards to follow up. You know, which makes sense. They see the boss do something, some big epic D, and they're like, yeah, it's going to get your boys all fired up and join in as well. Um, and I've just gone, basically, uh, full-on freebooter with this guy. Because some of the freebooter exclusive stuff is really, really nice. 
So I've given him the Warlord trait, Killer Reputation. So while an enemy unit is within three inches of this model, subtract one from the leadership characteristic of models in that unit. Very nice, but it gets better. Each time a combat attrition test is taken for that unit, subtract one from the combat attrition test. So yeah, a lot of the time if they're if models are fleeing on a one, now you're buffing that to a two. And they're, if they're fleeing on a two, if they're already you know if they've taken a real pound in and they're fleeing on a two now under half strength, uh, now they're going to be fleeing on threes. Um, so now half of them guaranteed pretty much are going to be running away really really nice reducing the leadership of the enemy um, and affecting their combat attrition tests is lovely and like i said he's going to have killed quite a bit so he's going to be forcing some of those leadership tests you know putting in the scorcher and then following in with the power claw and the attacks quick attacks he's putting in a lot of attacks he's probably got a load of boys around him throwing in more attacks so whatever has managed to survive that onslaught if anything is now facing a very scary leadership test that is debuffed, and then the combat attrition test is debuffed as well. Very, very nice indeed. But also, he is buffing the leadership of all models um, within six inches of him. And uh, leadership's taken a bit of a hit at the moment for Orcs. They don't have as many things that can... Uh, negate those leadership tests and the combat attrition tests and stuff this is one of the few things uh, in the codex that does go some way to raising our leadership so yeah really really nice um it's just going to make uh, your boys that little bit braver which is always nice because you don't want to be losing boys um so it's really nice to sort of flip that leadership uh, worry from you onto your enemy. Now suddenly they're worried about leadership. Especially some of the armies that don't really worry about it too much. Of high leadership and things. Uh, yeah this is really nice. And really quite unique. And I, I like that flavour with the um, freebooters. Um, and then I've also given him the Bad Moon Banner. So freebooters model only. This relic may be taken by a vehicle model. Uh, he's not a vehicle. But vehicles can take it as well. While an enemy unit is within six inches of the bearer, it loses the objective secured ability. Very, very tasty indeed. Um, so, yeah. Um, going in, attacking, hurting their leadership, and then they lose the objective secured ability. This is going to be great for going, like, charging headlong, going for some of them rear objectives and things. And, uh, yeah, just shifting those pesky sort of uh, core units that usually have that objective secured rule. That is huge. That is huge. Um, and, and potentially game winning um, in those key moments in the game when you really need to get the points. Like, that is fantastic. Um, so it's, it's great. And I think it really ruins your opponent's plans as well. Um, because when you see your opponent's stuff buffed, and they've got various things. You expect that. You expect that. But when stuff debuffs what you've got, that's really painful because that spoils your plans. Um, and so spoiling your enemy's plans, not only are you putting a lot of damage and hurt on the table, but now you're getting inside their head and you're screwing up the plans. And it's fantastic. Making their stuff far less effective. Um, so yeah, I love the way that's really tactical. I love the way it sort of puts the, the fear in the enemy. Um, the freebooters are very sure of themselves. They're very brave and cocksure. And so uh, yeah, it's very fluffy. It's very cool. Freebooters boss, the debuff boss is a really nice one. Yet one of the more expensive bosses I've listed here, but for good reason, because he could be responsible for winning you the game. He really, really could. And there you go, guys. There is um, just five examples of bosses you can give out. Um, and all very different. We've got a nice shooty boss. We've got a fighty boss. We've got a tanky boss. We've got a boss that buffs and throws out some buffs across your army. And we've got one that debuffs the enemy and takes away a lot of their abilities and their leadership. Um, which is really, really cool. So yeah, uh, five war bosses, all for different jobs, but all very effective at what they do. And that's just a small example. There's so many other combinations you can do with various clan traits. You've got the specialist mobs, um, and you've got the various different relics and things you can give them, not to mention the different war gear options he has. A choice of two different melee weapons, three different guns, um, he's got the attack squig for a few extra points that's probably worth it for those extra couple of attacks. Yeah, the war boss 
is in a really good place right now. Lately, ninth edition, I've loved using war bosses. Um, they're just they used to be really squishy. They used to hit okay in combat, um, but for me, they're always a little bit lackluster for what I would want a war boss to do. Um, now they hit like a freight train, and they can survive. If you put in the things like Super Cyborg Body or um, the best armor teeth can buy or Arda's Nails and various things like that, you really can make a boss that's going to be very hard to kill, which is really refreshing because we went through a long period of bosses that were like pretty easy to kill, to be fair. Um, so now it's great. They're in a fantastic position, not to mention with the war ability and stuff. It's, yeah, it's, uh, it's very cool. Very cool indeed. But guys, um, please uh, share what you do with your boss, war bosses in the uh, comments section. I want to see how you equip them, what clan they're in. I want to see what warlord trait you give them, what relics you give them, and what weapons you give them. And uh, why you do that, explain down below. So the viewers of this video, if they want to see more examples than the few that I've talked about, they can read down below and uh, get some great ideas. And maybe you'll come up with some that I haven't thought of, because there's quite a few options in this codex. And it would take a lot of games to try them all out. And uh, I think it... It's going to benefit a lot of the time on what your army type is like to which war boss is going to work for you and the style of play that you like. Um, I think they all have a use and it just depends what you're going to go for, really. Um, yeah, it's uh, I'm having a lot of fun with this codex and uh, I'm having a lot of fun making these tactics videos and I'm hoping you're enjoying them. And if you are enjoying them, then please hit that like button hit the subscribe button if you haven't already share the video out do all that sort of stuff uh, if you want to help the channel out i've got a patreon link at the end of the video it always pops up on the screen or go and check out some of my other videos and playlists and things uh, i plan to be doing a lot more of these tactics videos it's great since coming out of the uh, pandemic um being able to play it again and actually like focus on these kind of videos again uh, for so long I just haven't been able to play so I haven't been able to do tactics videos which uh, kind of sucks uh, but it's great to be doing this sort of stuff again so we've done death dreads we've done war bosses what is next I hear you ask well in the next tactics video the next let's build video we're going to be building some weird boys so yes we're going to get some psychic shenanigans going uh, we're going to let that wah energy flow through us and we're going to be talking about the various different psychic powers and also still the warlord traits and relics and things because you can give them to weird boys too. Uh, and we're going to be having a good look at some different build options for some different weird boys. That's going to be a lot of fun. But for now guys, this is 6 Plus Stevo. signing out.